Welcome to Unleashed, the show that explores how to thrive as an independent professional. Unleashed is produced by Umbrex, which connects you with the world's top independent management consultants. I'm your host, Will Bachman. This episode is U.S. specific, as I'm going to discuss the Paycheck Protection Program, which is an element in the CARES Act passed by Congress yesterday. CARES stands for Coronavirus Aid, Relief, and Economic Security. And I always wonder if they have someone in Congress whose job it is to come up with these catchy acronyms. The Paycheck Protection Program is a pretty amazing deal, and incredibly enough, independent professionals, the self-employed, and gig workers are eligible. Today, I've read the actual text of the bill, at least the relevant part, which is Section 19002, Paycheck Protection Program. I've also read multiple articles on the Paycheck Protection Program, and they all pretty much say the same thing as what you'll find in the bill, just in a bit plainer English. Understanding this program is important to all of us running small businesses so we can apply for these loans uh, expeditiously. As I mentioned in episode 234, Umbrex has put together a task force of consultants who have volunteered to advise businesses on a pro bono basis. Uh, Helping small businesses navigate this program is one of the areas we expect to see a lot of demand. Uh, If you own a small business and you're looking for support, you can sign up to request help at umbrex.com. Just click on the pandemic playbook link in the menu bar. And if you are a consultant interested in volunteering to advise businesses pro bono, on that same page, there's a separate link for you to sign up to volunteer. Okay, so regarding the Paycheck Protection Program, you'll want to move quickly on applying to this program. My intuition is that the allocated funds will not be sufficient to meet the total demand, and you don't want to be late to this party. Uh, The program has $349 billion allocated to it. That sounds like a big number, but I've seen estimates that the total demand uh, for the program could be much, much higher. In this episode, I'm going to discuss who is eligible for the loan, the maximum amount you can borrow, how you can get the loan forgiven, and yes, I said forgiven, the interest rate for any portion of the loan not forgiven, the application deadline, and whether you can double dip if you already got a Small Business Administration Economic Injury Disaster Loan, otherwise known as EIDL, related to COVID-19. Okay, who is eligible? Businesses with fewer than 500 employees are eligible. Also, restaurants and hotel companies that have fewer than 500 employees per location are eligible. Also, tribal businesses. 501c19 veteran organizations, 501c3 nonprofits, including religious organizations, and sole proprietors, independent contractors, gig economy workers, and the self employed are all eligible as well, which is pretty awesome. You do not need to show that you've lost business due to the coronavirus or that you've gotten sick from it or they've had your doors shut by down a lock by shut by a lockdown order. They made this thing with very few strings attached and they just seems like Congress wants to shovel money into the economy as quickly as possible and make it easy for people to apply. Okay, how much can you borrow? You can borrow up to 250% of your average monthly payroll expenses or basically 10 weeks of payroll. Um Now, they exclude from that number the payroll for anyone earning more than $100,000 a year. So if you earn more than $100,000 a year, uh, your um, payroll, unfortunately, would not be eligible. Uh, But if you have one or two uh, employees, then any payroll that you pay to them would be eligible. What do you need to do such that a loan will be forgiven? Okay, now this statement is, I'm quoting right from the U.S. Senate Committee on Small Business and Entrepreneurship. The amount of principal of the loan that may be forgiven is equal to the sum of expenses for payroll and existing interest payments on business mortgages, rent payments by the business, um, not for the owner's house, uh, for business leases and for utility service agreements. Payroll costs include employee salaries up to an annual rate of pay of 100000 
hourly wages and cash tips, paid sick or medical leave, and group health insurance premiums. So if, um, if you paid yourself more than 100000 in the preceding 12 months, like I mentioned, it seems that the loan won't be forgiven and your payroll doesn't count against the amount you can borrow. Okay, now you can use the funds for other purposes, but then you can't get the loan forgiven. Uh, the loan gets forgiven at the end of the eight-week period after you take out the loan. So basically, this becomes a pure government grant. If you keep all of your employees, the loan will be forgiven in its entirety. If you lay off some of your employees, then the forgiveness is reduced by the percentage of workers you lay off. So if you lay off 25% of your workers and keep 75%, then 25% of the loan you'll still have to pay and 75% would be forgiven. If you have already laid off employees, you can rehire them and you'll still be able to get the loan forgiveness. And for any portion of the loan not forgiven, the loan will be a 10-year lo uh, term loan with the interest capped at 4%. There's no fees on the loan, there's no collateral requirements, and the personal guarantees are waived. Can you double dip and get a Paycheck Protection Program loan as well as a Small Business Administration Economic Injury Disaster Loan, or EIDL, related to COVID-19? The answer to that is you cannot take out a Paycheck Protection Loan and an EIDL for the same purpose. However, if you've already taken out an EIDL, which does not have the loan forgiveness, I believe, uh, you can convert that into a Paycheck Protection Loan, which does have the loan forgiveness. So you, you can convert it over. How do you apply? So you can apply for this at you don't apply directly to the Small Business Administration. You apply at any lending institution that is approved to participate in the existing Small Business Administration SBA 7A lending program. Now, there are a few other benefits uh, be, um, in the CARES Act beyond the Paycheck Protection Program. There are some other elements that you might want to pay attention to. I'm not going to go into detail in this episode. But ones to look out for uh, are the unemployment benefit for independent contractors and self-employed people who don't typically qualify for traditional unemployment benefits. So check out your local state's Department of Labor as the rules vary by state. Um, and number two, relaxed net, net operating loss rules. So normally you can only uh, carry backwards a net operating loss two years in this case, They've relaxed the requirement. There's a greater number of years. Um, not going to get into details on that here. In the um, full, in the show notes, I'm including links, a bunch of links. So I've got a link to the full text of the CARES Act. Got articles from bench.co, and that does a really nice job of summarizing the Paycheck Protection Program as a separate article on the full CARES Act. Uh, there's a press release on the Paycheck Protection Program from the U.S. Senate Committee on Small Business and Entrepreneurship that nicely summarizes the key parts of it. Uh, I have a link to a blog post from the Economic Innovation Group that has a really nice table summarizing the key features of the Paycheck Protection Program. Uh, a link to careeronestop.org, which has links to the Unemployment Program website for every state. And a summary from Golenbach Eisman Law Firm and as well as a Forbes article. So a bunch of links so you can do some additional reading on this program. Uh, if you have questions, uh, you're welcome to email me at unleashed at umbrex.com. And again, if you want to volunteer, we'd love to get your help advising small businesses. Sign up, go to umbrex.com, click on the Pandemic Playbook link on the right, top right, and uh, there's a link to volunteer. Thanks for listening.